Welcome to the third edition of The Heretic Speaks, and this is Reverend Gina, as you know, <laughs> and uh, this past couple of weeks or so, I've been thinking a lot about failure and what it means to fail, and how we have such a very strange attitude, especially in U.S. culture, about failure. It, um... It's really funny because I, I, seminary kind of knocked the idea that failure is the end of the world out of my head. And we kind of have that idea. I know I had that idea growing up. Like if I failed or if I did something wrong, it was the worst thing ever. And, uh, and it was my very wise mentor, Ms. Ann Jefferson who pointed out to me that, you know, failure can be an open door. You know, there, you know, people, a lot of people have heard the stories of the rug weavers that put an intentional flaw in a rug because, you know, only God is perfect. And what's really interesting about that is that, you know, I, I, I understood that on an intellectual level for the longest time, but I didn't really understand it in my heart. And it took just doing work and failing and trying to keep the attitude of, well, you know, I failed this time, but maybe that's okay. Maybe, you know, maybe I can make it up to whoever that, you know, if I hurt them or something. And what I really found out was that even if I screwed up somehow, you know, if I was quick, quick to say, I'm sorry that I screwed up or, oh, you know, I really dropped the ball on this. I'm really sorry. You know, people are like, yeah, no worries. Don't worry about it. And sometimes things that I feel like I'm a fit, I failed at. People are like, what do you mean? You didn't do anything wrong. You're fine. And you, I, I, I just, you just kind of go, wait, but I just did, I was horrible. And people are like, no, you're fine. It's, it's kind of weird what your mind can conceive of as absolute abject failure. And then what it can do to, to throw you in the loop that, you know, you get into that loop where like, you feel you've done something wrong and then that connects to, oh my God, I must be a horrible person. And at least, you know, this is, this is how my brain works sometimes. And it's like, oh no, you know, and then you just kind of go into that downward spiral. And it's taken me a lot of time and a lot of work to really kind of recognize when I do that. And so, you know, things... I can kind of get into that loop and then I'm able to kind of poke a hole into that spiral and say, oh, wait a minute, you know, yeah, I screwed up. I apologize. It's all okay. Or I screwed up and, you know, things didn't go quite right, but, you know, it went okay. And then I'm like, okay, we're fine. I'm fine. I've learned something. It's not the end of the world. I'm not a horrible person and I'm not a failure. And, you know, and, and I was talking with um, the wife about this <laughs> the other day in terms of my church, you know, a lot of people would seem, would, would think that it was a failure that I only have a couple of people showing up to the in-person um, services. And I've been really surprised with myself that I'm not worried about how many people show up anymore. I'm not really worried about who's there or how many, you know, the numbers. I'm more concerned with, am I doing a good job with the precinct? Am I doing a good job? Can I feel that in my heart that I did what I could for whoever was there? Even if it's just me or even if it's just me and my deacons. <laughs> and if I can say yes to that, I think I've done a good job and it's not a failure. 
because I've done work for the people that are there. And, you know, sometimes I, I get into modes where I feel like I'm failure because I haven't done anything or I haven't told somebody something that I think they should have done or I should have done for them. And I was like, no, no. You know, they can't read my mind if, <laughs> you know, if I don't tell them what I need or what I want, you know, just because they didn't do what I wanted them to do doesn't make it a failure. It's because I didn't tell them what I wanted. <laughs> and there are other times where I feel like a failure and there's really not much I can do. Because with some people, like, you know, for being an ally, you know, I am a cisgendered woman and I am a white woman. And there are some area, some spaces where I feel that no matter what I do to be positive, to be uplifting, to do work, to support, no matter what I do as a person, I will always be a failure. I will always fail some people. And, you know, it's just something like something that just happens. You cannot be everything to everybody, no matter how good you are. It's just the way that life is. <laughs> and it it's just the way things roll. And I wish, you know, I wish we could be better. And I wish we could accept that, you know, people do stupid things and can be failures in that sense. But it doesn't, it's, it's, there's a difference between a failure that is a genuine failure you know, a, a, a genuine mistake or, you know, there's a difference between that and maliciousness. And you can always say something stupid. You can always do something stupid and not mean it in a malicious way. And if you recognize that right away and go, oh, crap, you know, I'm so sorry. I just did the dumbest thing or I just I'm so sorry I said that to you. If you can recognize that and apologize for it, then that's that's a good thing. You know, it's it's when you're purposely doing it to be mean to somebody and not recognizing what you've done. That's different. Or, you know, posting things online that is obvious obviously hurtful. I think for me learning to recognize when I do something dumb or when I do something silly or when I do something that's hurtful apolog and apologizing for it or when I just make a mistake in general. Learning to recognize what I do, learning to take responsibility for it, but then not taking it so to heart that it cripples me. Because if it, cause I've learned that if I take that too much to heart, like if I get it, let it get to that loop of you made a mistake, you are now a bad person, then I'm getting nowhere. And then I'm no good for anybody. I'm no good um, as a priest. I'm no good as a pastor. I'm not doing anybody any good by falling into a loop where... You just, it's just so hard to get out of. And I've gotten better at extracting myself from these things over the years, but, you know, it's been really freeing to realize, oh, wait a minute, it's not the end of the world. And I'm glad I realized that. And, you know, sometimes I don't remember, and sometimes it takes me a little while to remember that, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just it's just something happening blah, 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 or, you know, yeah, I made a mistake. Okay, let's move on. But I'm glad I know how to do it now. And I realize it's really hard for a lot of people. It's not an easy thing for some people to really get themselves out of that loop. They make a mistake and it's, you know, they're gone for weeks, <laughs> you know, days, weeks, months. And I wish we could recognize that with each other. 
you know, recognize that, you know, what we say matters, but what other people say also matters. Like if you hear somebody saying, oh, I'm such an idiot or, oh, I, I did this and I'm, I'm a horrible person. It's like, well, would you talk to your friends that way? And I know it sounds cliche and I know, I know it's really kind of silly, but it's very true. I mean, some of the things I can tell myself in my head, I'm just like, whoa, 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 back the butt up. You would not even, rec- you would not say that to anybody. Why are you saying this to yourself? You know? Like, would I tell a student of mine that they're stupid or a failure? No, absolutely not. But I'm telling myself this? It gets worse when there's body image involved, you know, because there's a lot of old tapes back there in the back of the brain. You know, a lot of things we hear was we're kids, you know, oh, stupid, fat, ugly, dumbass, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, you can go on and on, right? Faggot, queer, whatever, you know, all those. And... Sometimes they come back and you still have to deal with it. But a mistake, a failure shouldn't stay connected to that because it's not true. Because it's very strange how our perceptions of who we are and what we are are selves is very different from what anybody else sees around us. You know, I, I could say something to my wife, like, you know, Oh, I'm, I, I felt really stupid yesterday because I did X, Y, Z. And she's like, what do you mean? I didn't notice anything. (laughs) He just seemed pretty normal. Or, you know, I I could say like, I'm really, I was really grumpy today and I'm I'm Miss grumpy pants or, and Sarah's like, um, okay. I didn't notice it, but okay. And, you know, I've said that to other people too. And they're like, you're grumpy? Really? <laughs> I, I didn't notice that. Okay. Are you okay? And then, you know, we'd talk about it, but it's, <laughs> it's really interesting to know how your perceptions can really be so different from what other people see around you. And um, it, it re- kind of reminds me, we, we finished watching a show called Dollhouse last night. And, uh, you know, and, and it's a really interesting take on the mind, that show. And, you know, how the mind is pretty malleable and how much you actually keep, you know, even though you've had more memories on top of more memories on top of more memories. It's like, how much do you keep in your head? that you don't remember, but is still there and it's still affecting you. Like you can always remember certain feelings, certain tastes and smells, but you don't exactly remember where they came from. And I think that's true of failure and taunting and bullying and things like that. You know, you remember the feelings of what happens around when things, when things go wrong. And, you know, it's there and you may not remember all the memories from the past, but it's still there. The feelings are there. Everything's there. And, you know, it still affects you bodily. It still affects you emotionally and you can feel it and you can taste it and you can smell it. And it's really fascinating when you start recognizing, like if you start be trying to become more aware of what's going on when you feel these things, because then you, you're like, wow, you know, where is that coming from? Where, what is, what, what led me to make that conclusion when it's, when I know it's not true. And, you know, you can't always really trace things definitely, but if you know it's something that that comes up all the time, you can be aware of it. And there's a lot of overtime that I've had to become aware of as it's happening. You know, I become aware of when I get depressed. I become aware of 
when I'm trying to, when I'm going into one of those loops, negative feedback loops, you know, I'm more aware of when I'm angry or what causes my anger and where I direct my anger. So it's, it's a process and you work on it. But like I said, learning that a mistake is not the end of the world is a really big deal. And I'm not going to worry about things that are out of my control. And I think that's the really hard, the hardest thing, because it's hard to let go of that kind of thing. So that's what I got for you this week. That's my thoughts anyway. And uh, sorry it's so late, but it's kind of like I was trying to gather my thoughts during the day today. I have a few announcements, too. Um, We now have a forum. So if you go to thisweekinheresy.com, there's a link to the forums, or you can just go to thisweekinheresy.com slash forums. And uh, there's a forum for uh, This Week in Heresy there, and it's going to have the show notes for each show, and you can register. And there's also um, a forum for Between the World's Church. And if you'd like to email me or discuss things with me or talk about this topic with me, you can email me at worthyadvisor at gmail.com or send me a message through the website. Uh, comment on the show notes. And as always, you know, please feel free to subscribe to This Week in Heresy via iTunes or the Stitcher app. Um, then you can find those links on the website as well. And uh, I hope you enjoy these little ramblings of mine. Let me know. And if you want to give me some money through the tip jar because you like it, please do so. so put, put some reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. That would be really great too. And I hope you all have a great couple of weeks. All right. <laughs>